Hey, how's she going, boys? Welcome back to Grampy's Workshop. Mike here. Some nice that you could drop in. Sure appreciate it. Uh, I love when you guys drop in and have a look at my videos. And when you leave comments, that's extra special. So after this video, click the like and leave some comments. I wouldn't mind that at all. Anyways, what we're up to today in the shop, it's, uh, it's kind of chilly. We're in the middle of winter now. And the chains of my tractor were just about wore out. A couple of the cross links uh, broke on them. Wore out. They didn't break, they wore out. So uh, I ended up getting myself a new set of chains. So what we're going to do today is we're going to unbox these chains. So let's, let's have a go at unboxing them. Okay, here's my chains. Ooh, they're heavy. The wheels of my tractor are 26 by 12, 12. And uh, find and change you would think would be simple because that's a common size tire, but uh, it turned out to be quite a little chore. So what I ended up doing is I'd like to get a good set, or I wanted to get a good set of snow ice chains. Like I don't use my tractor for logging or anything like that. I just in the winter time put chains on it for plowing snow and for traveling on the ice, getting good grip and traction. So I thought, where better place to get good snow chains than in Canada, right? Jeez, can't go wrong there. Well, I'm just going to tell you, it's quite a little challenge to find chains at a decent price. You can find lots of chains, but man, oh man, they must be made out of gold, the price they charge. Anyways, I was watching a, a good friend of mine on YouTube uh, from uh, Steel to Wood, the channel is called. Joel Lesage has this channel. He lives in Quebec. And he has a little Boland's tractor. And the size of the tires on his tractor were exact same size as the tires that are on my tractor. And last winter, Joe ordered some chains. So I went back and watched his video, and I'll put the link down below so you can watch it as well, to find out where he got his chains, and because and, I like the style of them. Turns out he, gets these, he got his chains from a company called Chains Online, and it's, get this, it's in North Carolina. North Carolina, it probably snows down there twice a year, but they've got snow and ice chain down there. Go figure. So I had to go to North Carolina to get chains to put on my tractor here in North Canada. So I'm going to open these up and just see what they are. Uh, another thing about chains online, I'd just like to say the chains were a good price, uh, even with the Canadian exchange, but I had to pay uh, 50, printer $57 shipping. Now, I'd mentioned in another video one time or another comment that I made that it was free shipping from Chains Online. It's free shipping if you're in the contiguous United States. And I'm not. I'm in the contiguous Canadian provinces. <laughs> so it ended up I had to pay about $57 shipping. And that was $57 American. But if you take into account the price of these chains in American dollars and the shipping in American dollars, add that together, do the conversion, these chains were still about half the price of what I could find chains for in Canada. These chains, it's called Piedmont Chain Company. I think it's an American company, but I'm not sure of that either. But to be totally honest, the country of origin, uh, I'm, uh, I want to say, it doesn't make a big difference to me, but it does. It really does make a difference to me. We can't continue to buy things offshore and expect our country to flourish. That just won't work. It'll work for a generation, but then we'll be in big trouble. Okay, here you go. Look at that. Some more paper. Oh, uh, 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 uh. Instruction. And a nice bag. Jeez, the bag alone is worth $25. I'll have to be careful not to destroy this bag. And it says here, it's uh, their Piedmont chain ATV tire chains, even though I have a tractor. It says diamond pattern cross chain studded, part number ATV 3DS, and they fit uh, 26 by 12, 12. That was the important part. So anyway, uh, I'm going to try and get this string out of here without ruining the bag. Because this is a really nice bag. I wonder how you get these strings out. I remember getting potatoes years ago in a potato bag that was stitched across the top. And you could just grab one string and the whole thing would 
peel it apart. But I don't remember how to do that. Did try to get that string off the shirt. Oh, look at that. And then inside the uh, nice cloth bag, there's a plastic bag. So they're well packed, I must say. Now, before we go any further, these chains. I just want to tell you that they're heavy, but I want you to look at the uh, studs on them. See that? Each link has got two studs, and they're spot welded on there. And uh, we used to call those ice corks in the horse racing industry. We'd put corks on the shoes on the horse so that he could run around the corners at the track and not slip and fall. So that's what I like. The nice, uh, I'm going to call them corks. And it's got heavy duty uh, chain tensioners on them. Alright, so here's my chain. I got them all laid out. Now, one of the things I liked about these chains was not only the studs that I showed you earlier, but it has what it calls a diamond pattern. So instead of just straight cross links across the tire, you get where it comes in a few links, but then it, it has like the cross pattern. So these, uh, the idea of this is. This pattern will stay up on the bar treads of the tire, not fall between them, and it'll give good traction. And then those uh, ice corks there, they'll dig in like you won't believe. So it looks like these are going to be the, the proper uh, chain, that's a good thing. I'd like to say this too, that this hook here for tensioning the chains uh, is nice heavy duty, and there's one on each side, so that's good. It has uh, rings here that when you put the chain when you put the chain on the tire, then on the other end of the chain we have these loose tails, so they'll come up through this ring. Let me just show you here. They'll go through that ring. They'll pull down tight, so it's good easy way to try and tension the chain. And then there's little shackles here that will go onto the side of the chain. Also, to help tension the chains, I ended up, I got two of these. Uh, it's just like a rubber bungee, but it has plastic hooks here. Uh, they'll hook on the side chains on the front of the tire, not on the inside, but on the outside of the tire, and keep uh, good tension on the chain. So hopefully that'll work good too. So I have my tractor jacked up and these are the chains that I had on it. Now, when I was explaining earlier about these cross links go down between the bars, like if you look right along there, like for over half the ways around the tire, the only part of the chain that's sticking out, there's a couple links right there and a couple links right there, the only, in there, is the only chain that's above the bar, so it really doesn't give a whole pile of traction. When I had my other tires on, they were R4 Industrial, so these bars were a lot wider and they were f flatter, closer to the actual uh, KM or uh, crown of the tire here. So these cross links went across like a couple of bars, so they did stay proud of the tread of the tire, but not here. So we have to take them off. Uh, one thing I did too with these, I had bungee cords on the side here for tensioning them. And I've got a couple on the inside too, so I'm going to take those off. Uh, I think if your chains fit properly, you don't need to tension them on the inside. You just pull them tight, and then you can tension them on the outside, and that'll keep them tight. So, anyhow. And I had them wired. The extra links and whatnot, I had them wired so they wouldn't slap around. So I have to cut the wire off. One thing I found is putting my chains on. Uh, you don't want to have any slack on your chains. 
because uh, tractors these days don't have a whole lot of clearance under the wheel wells and between the inside of the tire and the outside of the chassis and you don't want the chains hooking up in anything so make sure that you chain these in good and uh, wire the extra links and then you just let the chains drop chains come off a lot easier than they go on all right, here's the new chain. The way I'm going to do it is, I'm just going to chuck them over top of the wheel here and let them hang, then I'll spin the wheel around until I get them up top. Or that's the plan. We'll see how it works out. It's not working out too good so far, is it? But the one thing you have to be careful of, make sure that your corks are facing out. Because if they're not, you're doing it wrong. Look at that, they already look good. Just let it be noted here, this is an important fact, that I haven't even got these chains on all the way, and I haven't skidded in the tractor once. <laughs> now the way these links work, I'm going to go in the last link, just to start with. And then I'm going to turn this over and hook it in the... Keep her lack, uh, link like that. And then I'm going to take the tail here. And there should be a loop of it somewhere, so I'll go this way with it. So I have the tail of the chain here with the uh, shackle on it, and I'm putting it through that loop. Just going to pull that back like that for now. Then I'll get that other one up here with the other tail and loop that through there. Pull that tight. And then these are supposed to go through there and then down to the side. So I'll do that too. My thought process here is just to get them around the tire. And then I'll go around the tire and uh, fit them up and tighten them. That's my idea anyhow. And like I say, there's a lot of different ways to put chains on. But at the end of the day, if your chains are on, you've done it right. Oh no, can't do that yet. Let's do this inside me. So I was watching a video the other day, uh, uh, living with the harnesses, and Arliss was putting chains on his Kubota, and uh, I was thinking, man, man, I can remember putting chains on big tractor, big, uh, well it wasn't a tractor, it was a logging truck, and talk about a job trying to push a chain, that's, you know, just doesn't work. Anyways, <laughs> they commented on Arliss's video that he was having trouble getting his chains on, and uh, here I am now. Having trouble getting my chains on because it's a miserable job. The good thing about this though is when you're putting them on in the cold and your fingers are numb, then you can't feel nothing. Makes it a lot better. <laughs> They're on and I've got these tails looped through the D-rings or the, the rings and pulled back down there, but they're certainly not tight enough. And what I like to do is, at least on the cross links that I had, was I would tighten the inside first. And then work on the outside. So that's what I'm going to do.
One, two, three, four, five free links. So we're going to put her in this one. Hey, Arliss, how did you do this? <laughs> There it is. Doesn't look too bad, eh? Man, I don't know. I think maybe these are too small. This guy's got to come all the way up to there. That ain't gonna work. I just made a remarkable discovery. I have to loosen this. Okay, I loosened that off two links, so now let's see what happens. I'll go from there to here. And then from here. Here. There we have it. Now we just have to uh, wire up these excess links. I like this idea of putting the extra links back into that shackle. Because I'd like to wire that uh, pin too, so that, that uh, so I don't lose that. So now I can wire that right into those shackles, that chain there. So. so we do a little wire in here. First of all, Now I think all I have to do is wire up the inside and this side is done. Okay, there's the uh, chains on and if you check in there, there's a, uh, well I wouldn't say lots of clearance, but there is clearance. And that's all you need. You don't want it to be hooking up anything. These uh, X patterns, the diamond patterns are pretty well centered in the wheel and everything's wired up and I've got my tensioning uh, bungee on there. It's a little bit of a loop right there, but uh, that's on the outside. It'll probably go away. Okay, so uh, that's it. Looks like they're both on. Quite a little struggle with this fella to get the wire on, but we got her.
<laughs> After a struggle, the chains are on the tractor. And then uh, I hope the video works out all right here for where I was showing where I was plowing. I just plowed a little bit in the landing, went out the lane and back a couple of times. So uh, I hope you saw that. Uh, the chains work good. I'm very pleased with them. I like them. Uh, I did struggle putting the chains on, as you saw. Uh, there's probably better ways to do it. In fact, if you check out Arliss's video where he was putting chains on his tractor there a week or so ago, he did a much better job than I. Uh, he got them on with a little bit of a struggle, but nevertheless he got them on. And he was working outside in the cold, and his fingers, well I'm sure he's just getting the feeling back in them now. Anyway, he did a not bad job. And then there's another channel, GP Outdoors. GP put chains similar to these on his tractor, on his Kubota tractor way back uh, in the start of the winter. And he did a really good job putting those on. So the only thing I can figure is, he did one of two things. One, he either followed the instructions right to the letter, or two, he edited out all, all the mix-ups and the mess-ups. <laughs> I think I'm on to you, Gord. <laughs> Anyways, he got his chains on in there some nice. I, li I like his chains, and I bet you if you ask him, he'll tell you how great they are in the snow and ice. Getting up that little hill that he's got in his lane, he just drives up there now like it's Sunday afternoon. And then another channel uh, was uh, Joe Lesage on Wood to Steel, uh, or sorry, Steel to Wood. Uh, Joe has a bonus tractor and it has the same size rear wheels as mine, and that's, Joe gave me the idea to get these chains from Chains Online because they fit his tractor perfect, and they fit my tractor perfect as well. So Joe put his chains on and he had uh, good success putting them on, they went on really neat and tight and straight, but... Joe had help. Joe had Dave from RCAF Polar Express helping him out. And I'll put links to Joe's channel and to Dave's RCAF Polar Express down below if you want to go check out their channels. They're loaded with great content and interesting little projects. Anyhow, I got my chains on. It was a bit of a struggle, but they're on. They work good. I'm happy. I hope it snows a half a foot tomorrow so I can get out there and start plowing and put these chains to good use. So appreciate everybody tuning in. It takes a lot of time to watch videos. I know that because I spend a lot of time watching videos. So I appreciate the time that you give to watch my videos. That's, uh, that, that's humbling, I tell you what. And if you like to comment, I love the comments. I try to respond to every one of them. And uh, I hope I do. If I miss anybody, I apologize for that. So, Anyways, thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to comment. Don't forget to click like. And uh, come on back again to Grampy's Workshop for another project. In the meantime, we'll talk to you.